Now the most important thing. Okay, what are the determination of equilibrium price? When does short-run market equilibrium occur? No? So equilibrium price is... I must say that is pretty familiar to all of us. The one at which quantity demanded is exactly equal to quantity supply. Okay. Now, so not less, not more, but equal. Where demand and supply meet each other, that is equilibrium. And no incentive for either suppliers or demanders to deviate from the decisions at this price, holding other conditions constant. So this is that familiar to you also. This is from the concept of equilibrium, Nash equilibrium that we learn in game theories. Yeah? So it's actually similar idea here. So once they're at equilibrium, there's no incentive to move away from it. Uh, for example, when uh, the sugar cane market is saturated already, so he knows after several days, he knows more or less, okay, that is 50 classes of sugar cane juice that the village demanding every day. Now, why would he sell more? Because more supply implies we, he would have to reduce the price, right? That's the idea. So what would we do to solve for the equilibrium price? We set QD and QS equal. Symbol now. That we learned from introductory microeconomics. No. And then we solve for B star. Okay. So let's do an example no, about finding short run market equilibrium. So I wrote down some necessary assumption no, given by the problem already. No. So we have the short run cost function CQI which is a qubit function of qi. Why i is there? Because it's for individual form. However, here we assume that each form has the same short run cost function. Now, and we have total 100 forms. Each of these 100 forms have exactly the same short run cost function. That's the first thing. The second thing, we have a demand function, but now the market demand function, because here denoted as capital QD, no? which is a function of market price P, also capital P. Now, so let's do it step by step. The first question will ask you to find the short run. Supply, sorry, supply function of each form. Now, what is that? So here's the thing. Now we need to go back to the basic assumptions which we used to analyze short-run market equilibrium. Remember? The two things, firms aim to maximize profits, right? And the second thing, price is given to firm. No. So these two assumptions implies that what we have done before for profit maximization in production and supply hold in this case. Let's write it down. Okay, so profit 
maximization and price taker. These two imply that one important condition, remember, you could go back to that video that week to look for it. But for now, marginal cost. Firm will set the production quantity at the level that up to the point where marginal cost equals the market price in the case of price taker. Okay? So we could write here that is the derivative of C with respect to Q would be P. That is the first thing we need here. Now let's plug in the derivative. Now. So that means free power goes first, no? 3 divided by 300, so at the end we have 1 over 100. No? QI squared plus 2 times 2, 4 QI plus 4 QI, the derivative is 4 equals P. No? So here let's write down the question asks you to have the short run supply function of each firm. No? So short run supply function is actually QI as a function of P. That's the target that we're looking for. Okay, so now we have P and QI. We need to solve for QI as a function of P. So what? What to do? Here. Hmm? We could get rid of this 1 over 100 by multiplying everything, both sides of the equation, by 100. So 100 multiplied by 1 over 100 is gone. So we have QI squared plus 4 times 4, sorry, 4 times 100 is 400 QI yeah. plus 400 again, right? Okay, I make a mistake actually. So here is 0 0.2. Yeah. So here is 0 0.2, and this is not 400 but 40. Okay. It happens sometime, okay? On the other side, also multiply by 100. So we have 100 P, all right? Now, what's next? How do we solve it further? It requires a little bit of observation. I remember in high school, we study something about some um, most necessary uh, equality. No? So here you could actually write it QI square. Pay attention now. This is important. No? Then we could write it 2 times QI times 20. No? And plus 400 is actually 20 square equals 100p rewrite. No? Then what is on the left hand side? On the left hand side, you will have QI plus 20 everything square. No? So this is actually the equality over there equals 100p. So now we could already get rid of the exponent by taking square root of both sides, right? So that means qi plus 20 equals 
square root of 100 p uh, equals square root of 100 is 10 times p to the power of 0 0.5 uh, and here we could already solve for qi uh, as a function of p which is 10p 0.5 minus 20. Uh, this is the answer for the first question. Okay. The second question, I again make some boundary. Okay. The second question, question B, let's say it's right here. Ask you industry supply function. Remember here we're talking about short run. No? So how do we find the short run? Supply functions now. Remember on the slide, we remember what we did with demand. We sum up, if for the demand, we sum up the demand quantity, demanded quantity of each individual in the market, right? So, similar for supply, we sum up the demand, sorry, we sum up the supply of each individual's firm and over this 100 firms, and we have the supply. Yeah. We would have Q as P. This is what asked by the question. Q as P equals sum up from I equal 1 to n equal 100, right? Qi p. And because Qi is here, like I said in the beginning, assumed to be the same for every firm, we could actually just multiply this by 100. Yeah. So Qs p equal 100 times p to the zero, uh, sorry, to the power of 0 0.5 minus 20 equals a hundred p to the zero to the power of 0 0.5 minus 2000. Yeah. And that is industry supply function. We'll be back. Okay, let's continue. But before that, I hope you realize I make a mistake. At one point, I dropped the 10 here when we calculated the industry supply. So at the end, I had something like 100, but actually it's 1,000 times P0.5 minus 2,000. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. If you haven't realized, that's fine. Now we continue with question C. So question C asks for equilibrium quantity and breadth. Finally, right? Because this is what we have in mind all the time when talking about the market. And finally you see it. Okay? How to do that? We have that on this slide, right? Set QD equal to QS. And then solve for P. Now, so we would write as here minus 200P plus 8,000 equals 1,000 p to the power of 0 0.5 minus 
2000. Okay. And then we could actually put everything on one side just to simplify that. Yeah? So let's put to the other side now. Yeah? 1000 p to the zero power of 0 0.5 plus 200 p. No. And then minus 10,000, right? Because 8,000 here to the other side minus 10,000 equals zero. Okay? Now, how to solve for this? Again, that needs some uh, factorization. However, now we know how it goes already. Yeah. But before factorization, let's simplify a bit by dividing everything by 200 because here is everything is possible to divide by 200. Yeah. So that is you have 1000 divided by 200 is 5, right? P to the power of 0 0.5 plus 200 is gone. P, yeah? Minus 10,000 divided by 200 is 50 equals 0, right? Now take it slowly, okay? We could rewrite P as P to the power of 0 0.5, everything in the bracket square, right? And then similar, for the other part, 2 times p to the power of 0 0.5 and times what? 2.5, right? Let's put it in brackets so not confusing with the times, okay? Alright, and we need what in order to arrive in that equality that we used before? Plus, right? 2.5 everything square because here we have 2.5 right and we put 5 sorry 50 to the other side okay but because here we plus 2.5 out of nowhere on the other side we also have to plus 2.5 square so to keep the equality without changing the sign. Yeah? Okay, so now on this side we could already write it as p to the power of 0 0.5 plus 2.5, right? Everything square. That's how it works. And equals 50 plus 2.5 square, 2.5 square is 6.25, no? so plus 50, that is 56.25, same as before, we could take the square root of both sides, P to the zero power of 0 0.5 plus 10, sorry, 2.5 equals the square root of 56 point zero, sorry, point 0.25 is 7.5. Okay? And there we have P to the power of 0 0.5 equals 7.5 minus 2.5 is 5. And that means at the end P start equals square both sides. Now we have to square now both sides 25. Okay? And this is equilibrium. Right. Okay. 
The next thing is quantity. So we have price here. We could plug in either QD or QS. Both, both should yield the same result, by the way. So now I will just plug in a QS. Okay? So QS start equals QD start equals 1000 times P to the zero, power of 0 0.5 is again 5. Yeah. Minus 2000. So 1000 multiplied by 5, that is 5000 minus 2000, that will be 3000. Yeah. This is equilibrium quantity yeah. all right for the last question ask you about supply quantity of each form. How to? It's just simply QI star, right? This is what you have when you have a hundred form. So what if you have one form that would be QS divided by N, right? By the total number of form and that will be um, 3000 divided by 100 at the end that will be 30 mm -hmm. easiest way otherwise you could also block the P the P start that we have derived here back to what we derived in the question A. Remember we have the individuals from supply function in a short range in A. Okay? So we finish with this example.